Welcome to Making Art with Miss Paula Lise. Today I'm going to show you how to make figure sculptures. So the first thing we're going to want to make is the armature. So I begin this unit by teaching the students about basic human anatomy and proportions and they learn how to draw the human skeleton. We actually use this skeleton to help them with creating the proportions for their armature. So as you can see I have two pieces of wire. One longer piece of wire, one shorter one. What you're going to want to do to begin your armature, you're going to want to take the longer wire and you're going to want to make sure the two ends meet and you're going to bend that wire in half, just like that. Then we're going to be making, constructing the head portion first. So what you're going to want to do, I'll move this over, you're going to want to take your wire with the round part, you're going to want to put your thumb in the end, and you're going to want to twist the wire one, two times around the end, to make a nice little loop on the top. This is going to be the head and the neck for our armature. Next, we need to make sure we have our shoulders. So you're gonna pull that wire apart nice and wide. You're gonna to wanna to take your fingers and use them about three or four fingers wide to make sure that you have the nice wide shoulders on your armature. You can actually even use this as a template to help you. What you do with this on top, I like for students to kind of figure out where the rib cage should be and once they've laid that on top they make that little X and twist one two times where the rib cage of their armature should go. So they can actually place this on top of the skeleton to help them with laying out and constructing their armature. So their armature should be a little bit longer than the skeleton because they will be folding the feet at the end. So that is the first step of creating the armature. The next step is to add the arm. So we're going to use the shorter wire for that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this wire, you're going to want to put it through the loop along the top and make sure that it's even. Once you've done that, you're going to go around, loop the wire in, and you're going to pull that arm nice and tight. You've got one arm, and then you're going to do the same on the other side, except you might need to loop around the other way. So I use a low gauge wire so that it's a lot easier for students to bend and manipulate the wire. So now they have their wire armature for their figure sculptures. The next step is of course to add some aluminum foil. So the idea is that the armature, the wire armature, acts like the skeleton, whereas the foil is going to act like muscle. So on the back of this handout, I actually have some muscles for students to understand that they need to add some substance to their armatures. Okay, they're not going to be wire thin. So what they're going to do, starting, I like to actually start at the feet, the legs, they're going to start wrapping and twisting the foil nice and tight around. So you're going to want to make sure that it's tight and twisted. If you would like to use some masking tape to ensure that the foil stays in place, feel free to do so. So you take one piece of foil at a time. I like to pre-cut a few pieces. You're going to want to put foil around both legs not just keeping it loose like this, but really twisting, making sure it's on there nice and tight. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Not So it's not going anywhere. As you move up through the body, you can move, bend the arms out and you wrap around the body. This is actually where I encourage them to put a piece down, take another piece of foil, sculpt a little foil ball or sphere, put that on top of the chest, and then wrap a piece of foil around. That way their sculpture begins to have some depth to it, and it's not super flat, because you want it to be three-dimensional. So again, you can take another 
small aluminum foil sphere, place that on top, take another piece of foil, wrap it around so that it begins to show some depth, especially in the torso of your figure sculpture. You're going to want to do the same with the head. You might even cut this in half, make it smaller. Use a smaller sphere, place that on the head, and a smaller piece of foil to wrap it around, keeping that neck thin so that there's a difference between the head and the neck, and using additional foil to wrap around the arms, making sure you're twisting, twist, 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 keeping it nice and tight. So I have one arm, making sure I'm only using one piece of foil at a time, squeezing, wrapping it tightly. All right, so I want to encourage them to look at their sculpture from not just the front, but also from the side to make sure that the head and that torso really are demonstrating a sense of depth and are more voluminous and not flat. Also the thighs, they might want to go back because if they look at the muscles, they'll look and realize that thighs are a lot thicker than the ankles. So maybe adding, folding the foil first and adding additional foil to that thigh area of your armature. Squeezing nice and tight when you're done. All right, once students have constructed this wire and aluminum foil armature, they then get to pose their sculpture in a unique and exciting way. So we actually talk about gestures and uh, storytelling, and we talk about what kind of story they want to tell with their figure sculpture. So once students have posed their figure sculpture in a gesture, they're gonna wanna also bend the feet at the bottom. The next step is to nail this onto a wood base. So I, this is actually a part where I do this. I take small nail, I lie the figure flat, and I put one, usually two, nails on each board. So the next step is to cover this armature in plaster. So this is plaster gauze or plaster strips. So students take one piece at a time, they dip it all the way in the water could get rid of the extra water. And they start by wrapping the bottom to ensure that the sculpture is securely attached onto the board. Then they take another strip all the way, get the extra off, and slowly start to wrap the sculpture in the plaster, ensuring that you're really smoothing it each and indiv each single individual piece as you go along. You don't really want to rush this because you want to make sure as soon as it starts to dry, it's going to solidify and you're not going to really be able to change it later. So while it's wet, you really want to pick up that sculpture, make sure the plaster is on there nice and smooth. Here's an example of a finished armature that a student has covered in plaster completely. So once students have done this step, the next part is to add a face. So I actually use these silicone rubber molds for faces and I use this pearl paper clay. And what I do is I have students, I give them a small piece I tell them to flatten the piece like a cookie. They then take that cookie, they put lace it inside the mold, and they're gonna push it down, almost like a mask, and kind of rub it in all the way around. Then they bend this, remove the mold, so they have a face, 
and in order to attach the paper clay onto the head, they add a little bit of water. So you're going to dip your finger in some water, place it on the back, and you're going to want to put it on top, and then take your fingers and smooth the face. So students then use this paper clay to add additional details. So examples, uh, one student's face, instead of a face, they have a mask. They're more than welcome to do that. They can also use the paper clay to kind of smooth out some of the plaster and start to build any clothing with the sculpture. I also want to show you some other examples of student work so then they can also if their sculpture is not standing this example they're uh, leaning back in a chair we have here one student has her sculpture with a large column that's going to be next to it and even here we have a armature that's going to be on a bicycle that was they made using wire and cardboard so feel free to have your students be as creative as possible when making these sculptures uh, the next step once they have finished using all of the paper clay to add any details is to paint the figure sculptures and then add any mixed media materials and techniques so I have a school store supply store that I place in the middle of the room and it has different materials that students are able to use including buttons, feathers, pom-poms, yarn, anything that they would like to complete and finish their, their figure sculpture to whatever state they would like. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make figure sculptures with me today. You can actually use the same materials and techniques to create not just figures, but animals as well. You can check that out as well as step-by-step -step directions on my blog. That's misspaulalise.blogspot.com. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for tuning in. Until next time, bye!